Good afternoon, Saints. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church in Bay County, Florida. I um, <clears throat> forgot how busy it gets this time of the year on the beach. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was sort of busy and it'd be like that. And being after Easter, I thought it might be calmed down, but they had a jazz festival out here and motorcycles and I think next week's bike week but some <laughs> came early and uh, but we got here on time and I am looking forward to proclaiming God's word to you today we're in the 11th chapter of Hebrews and we might finish the 11th chapter up but we might not it depends on how much time we have so if you open your Bibles, go to Hebrews 11, verse 27. 11, verse 27. Now, the last two messages was on Moses could not say, it is finished. And I've modified that somewhat this week to Moses nor his successors could say it is finished. Because we're going to look at some of his successors today. So beginning with verse 27, By faith he left Egypt behind, not being afraid of the king's anger, for Moses persevered as one who sees him who is invisible. By faith he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch the Israelites. By faith they crossed the Red Sea. As though they were on dry land, when the Egyptians attempted to do this, they were all drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after being encircled by the Israelites for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute received the spies in peace and didn't perish with them who disobeyed. And what more can I say? Time is too short for me to tell you about Gideon, Barak, not Brock, but Barak, <laughs> Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength after being weak, became mighty in battle, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead. They were raised to life again. Some men were tortured, not accepting release, so that they might gain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, as well as bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They died by the sword. They wandered around in sheepskins, in goatskins, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and on mountains, hiding in caves, holes in the ground. All these were proved through their faith their faith in the coming Messiah. But they did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better for us so that they would not be made perfect without us. Our Abba Father, as we look back to these people, these saints under the Old Covenant and how they persevered in their faith to the coming of the one that you sent for them and for us. He came, lived for us, and then died for us, paying all our sin debt. And you ratified it. He rose again the third day. As we look at these people, may we be eager to join them in the day of the resurrection. As we break open your word tonight, may we hear the soft sound of the sandal feet. May we see Jesus 
in Him only. And we pray these things in His name and the power of the Spirit. Amen. 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 Have you ever read something in the Bible and then you went one more time and found something you missed? I mean, you totally missed it. Well, you said you were going to enjoy the resurrection from last week. Well, I'm, I'm going to be on top of you. I want to, first of all, for you to look in uh, Hosea, the sixth chapter. And I can probably read it before you get there. Um, and Hosea's writing to these people. You remember, he's the one that God told to go marry a prostitute. How appropriate that we'd be talking about Rahab a few, minutes, a few moments today. But he says, Come, chapter 6, verse 1, let us return to the Lord. For He has torn us, and He will heal us. He has wounded us, and He will bind up our wounds. He will revive us after two days. And on the third day, He will raise us up so we can live in His presence. And what does Genesis 17 1 say? I am God Almighty, he told Abram. He said, live in my presence and be blameless. Hosea saying, live in the presence of Jesus and be blameless. Who was the one that was raised up after three days? Jesus. Now, look at this. He said he had wounded us and he'll bind up our wounds. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus as our substitute. Even in the Old Covenant, they were looking forward to the substitute that was coming and said after three days He will raise us up. Our resurrection is in Christ, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15. It says, He was the first fruit of them who slept. And then one day He's coming and waking us up and rejoining us. Then we see Matthew 17. I meant to say this last week, but I ran out of time. They're in the mountain where Christ is transfigured. And Peter says, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Moses and Elijah didn't say anything, but Moses had prophesied, said, when the prophet like me comes... You listen to Him and do everything He says. And what does God say? This is my beloved Son. I take delight in Him. Listen to Him. When Christ comes again, there's not going to be a scowl on His face to His saints. He is going to welcome us with open arms and rejoicing because He got us home. He says, hear Him. Do all He says. Elijah. He said, how long you guys are going to halt between two ways? If Baal is God, serve Him. If Yahweh is God, serve Him. And then he called fire down from heaven. And he took his sword and slew 450 of Jezebel's prophets that day. And I think the rest of them slew the other 400. What, what, what? Elijah was carrying a sword? Yes! It's no sin for us to defend ourselves. As we look at this, we see the saints of the Old Covenant and we see what people did to them. The unbelievers are the world. The saints are the believers in Christ, whether they're in the Old Covenant or New Covenant. Then, the writer here talks about a list of people. Now, I'm not going to read all these verses. I'm going to give you the verses. And you can go back and read them. The first one is Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. Just back to the matter, she was. But she hit some spies. And they told her, put a scarlet cord down, and when we get through marching around the city and falls flat, you will be saved, you and your family. 
And it happened just that way. That's in uh, Joshua 6.20 and some other places. And it's also cited in Matthew 1, 4 and 5 where it talks about uh, the genealogy of Jesus. Rahab, the prostitute, was the great, 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 great grandmother all the way back to Rahab. And then even past that. But Rahab, the, the guy, one of the spies' name was Salmon, and he married her, and they had a child named Boaz, who married Ruth, who had a child named Obed, who had a child named Jesse, of who David came, and from David, 28 generations lately, later, came Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. You see, God adopts people from all ages and all walks of life if they will come to Him. She came to Him. She had a revelation from God that these two men were righteous men and that the life of Jericho as a Canaanite city was over. I wish the saints could look in the Scriptures and see that the life of the United States as it turns from God is not the place to be in. That's not the side to be on. Next we see Gideon, Judges 6.31. Then we have Barak, not Brock, but Barak, in uh, Judges 4, 6 through 24. We have Samson, Judges 13, 24. Now there's more verses than that, but that, those are key verses. If you find that, you can find the whole story. And you got Jephthah, who said, If God, if you'll give me the victory, I'll dedicate as a sacrifice the first thing that walks in my house when, he, when I get home. And his daughter walked out. So some of these guys weren't all that righteous worthy. But he's putting them in the hall of faith. We don't get the full story. Maybe there was a lot of repentance went on after that. Then at David, 1 Samuel 16. Samuel, 1 Samuel 7, verse 9. And then the prophets, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and then John. These people were all in the Old Covenant. You say, John's in the New Testament. I know. He was the last Old Covenant prophet. And I told you the unbelievers are in the world. We have unbelievers in the time Jesus was here that were Jewish. We probably have some unbelievers in the church. In fact, I know we do because they never go to church. But if you go and talk to them, I made a decision 20 years ago. I got my ticket punch. Well, the Bible does not teach faith for a moment brings life for eternity. It's all the ones believing. John 15, 18 through 21. He talks about the Pharisees that hated him. John 5, 16, they persecuted him. Why? Because he claimed to be the Son of God and thereby making himself equal to God. In Acts, they persecuted the saints. What did Jesus say? If they hated me, they're going to hate you. And they did. And one of the main ones was Saul of Tarsus. And he formed the church that he finally served in. How did he do that? He scattered the Christians all over the place. Some of them went to Antioch. He was on the way to Damascus, believe it or not, to imprison Christians. Take them back. Kill them or whatever he was going to do to them. Put them in jail. And he met Jesus Christ. Much like when you have met Jesus Christ, and you said, Oh, Lord. Call him Lord. He said, Who are you? He said, I am Jesus who you persecute. We have persecuted Jesus all our life till we came to faith in him, and then we became his children, or his, bro his brothers and sisters. The Father is our Father. 
with the child, child, the adopted child of the father. And a man took him to a place called Antioch, one of those churches that he had started. But he didn't know he was doing that. In John 8, he says, You know not the Father because you're not from God. You're of your Father the devil. But they were professing saints, but they weren't. John 10, 34, he said, Your law, he says, Your law to the Jews. He also said in John 8, 17, Your law of tells that the testimony of two men, John and Jesus, is true. John 15, 25, he said, you hated me, or they hated me, without a cause. And John, let's see if I can get to this real quick. Sixteen three. They will do these things because they haven't known the Father or me. You know, there's a lot of people say they know God, but they only know things about God. Beware of knowing things about God and not knowing God. All those in Christ are true Israel. Just because you say I'm a Jew does not make you a child of God. John 8, 44, he said, you, talking to the Jews who were persecuting and trying to kill him, said, you have not known my father, you are of your father, the devil, because you cannot hear my voice. And then in John 15, 5, he says, I am the true vine, the true Israel. John 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. This was a prophecy from Ezekiel 34 where they, he said, I'm going to take these false shepherds, I'm going to do away with them, and I'm going to shepherd them myself. And here he is saying, I am the good shepherd. Why? Because the old covenant economy was set up to be a light to the Gentiles. Were they a light to the Gentiles? No. He said, My name is blasphemed in the nations because of you talking to the old covenant people of Israel. So God became man and became the shepherd for His people, for His people that were overlooked by the snobs of the leaders of the Jews. And he said, you will be the light to the Gentiles. In Isaiah 40, i got so many buttons here, I can't decide where I'm going. Um, Isaiah 40, verse 11, He protects His flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in His arms and carries them in the fold of His garment. He gently leads those who are nursing. Are you hungry? Nurse on Christ. Listen to His every word. God said, This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. And then Jesus in Jerusalem said, O oh, Jerusalem, I would have gathered your children to Myself, but you leaders were not wanting Me to do that. So, your end has come. And about 37 years later, He came. I think I mentioned this last week. But Jesus was expected. The Jews could do math. They could look at the prophecy of Daniel. 490 years is here. 483 years Jesus was baptized and began His ministry for three and a half years. And the 490th year, 
in the middle of it, the Messiah was cut off. And they did it, and they didn't even realize what they were doing. Because as 1 Corinthians said, if they had known what they would do, they would not have done it. But Jesus has said, the prophecy is to be fulfilled. You will fill up the measure of the wrath of God upon you. And they did it by killing Him. In, in um, the second chapter of Luke, 2.32. Simeon said, Indeed, this child is destined to cause the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, and a sword will pierce your own soul that the thoughts of many may, may be revealed. But before that, he had said, You are a light for revelation to the nations and glory to your people Israel. Remember that light that the Old Covenant was supposed to be? And they weren't. But Jesus is. He's the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world in John 8, 12. And then we see in Acts 13, 47, For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles to bring salvation to the end of the earth. That was Paul testifying. He was carrying on the work of Christ. You see, we have in our Bibles, it says the Acts of the Apostles. Actually, they're the Acts of Jesus Christ through the Apostles. And then in Acts 26, 23, that the Messiah must suffer and that as the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light to our people and to the Gentiles. What Paul and Peter and Jesus are saying is, there's no more Jews over here and Gentiles over here. You have Jews and Gentiles coming together to form one new body. And all the Jews and Gentiles that don't come to the body, listen to me carefully, are the new Gentiles. If you're an unbeliever, whether you're Jew or Greek or Gentile, it doesn't matter. You are a Gentile. And if you're a Jew or a Gentile and you're in Christ, you are Israel. You're true Israel because Jesus is a king. We see in Isaiah... Verse 6. He says, It is not enough for you to be my servant, raising up the tribes of Jacob and restoring the protected one of Israel. I will also make you a light for the nation to be my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, His Holy One says, to one who is despised, one who is abhorred by people and a servant of rulers. Kings will stand up and princes will bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and He's chosen you. This is the same thing that Jesus was saying as He fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. And then we see In Luke 4, if there was ever a mic drop, listen to this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord. And He said, in your presence today, this prophecy is fulfilled. What a mic drop, right? Using present day language, the mic drop of all mic drops. I'm here to fulfill the prophecy. 
of the shepherd coming to shepherd the people of Israel and to be a light for the Gentiles. Well, as we look at the final two verses here in the passage, all these were approved by their faith in the coming Christ. But they did not receive what was promised. Remember he said, many people have wanted to see what you see today is what Jesus said as he was talking to his people and they rejected him. These people were thankful, but they didn't see the coming one. But when he died, there's a place in Matthew that says people got up out of the graves and went throughout the city. Who were these people? The Old Testament saints, they got to spend the day in paradise that day with the thief. Rahab the harlot, Jephthah, the one that sacrificed his daughter, Samson, that was the biggest womanizer probably in Israel. And God forgave them all. He says, since God has provided something better for us so that they would not be made perfect without us. So on the day, the last day, when Christ comes, the dead in Christ, Old Covenant, New Covenant, will rise first. And the ones who are alive and still remain will be changed in the moment in twinkling of an eye, and we will all be together as Christ judges His enemies. Amen. Today, if you're hearing me and the sound of my voice, run to Christ if you are not in Him. He says, All that come to me I will in no wise cast out. Come to Him. It is urgent. You may not have another hour of time in your life. Come to Him today. Amen. Amen.